Now, we all get angry, but what we do with that anger, that's the ticket. That's the key to it all. Because, yes, we all get angry. As a human being, you will get angry at something, whether you stub your toe when you're walking around, or the worst possible event you could think of was done to you by some person. So, you know, you're angry, okay? You're angry, you're sitting there filled with this anger, and what are you going to do with it? Because it's anger, it's energy in a sense. It's a positive charge of energy that makes you want to do something. And that's all natural. That is part of being angry, is the desire to hit something, or scream, and punch, and there's an entire school of thought that goes along with this idea that, oh, you're angry, scream at a pillow, punch a punching bag, do something to express that anger, like throw a glass, that sort of thing. You're going to vent it, but not on a person, right? And that's going to help you relieve the anger, get rid of that energy, and on the surface, this seems like a good idea, right? You're angry, don't direct it at a person, direct it at a thing. You're not going to hurt a thing the same way you hurt a person. The worst you're going to do is break it, right? Yeah, don't let it build up or else it'll explode violently and you won't have any control and you just have to release it. But let me tell you a truth here. That is wrong. Yeah, it's wrong. And why? Because... The brain works on training. You train your responses to things. Pavlovian training. Look it up if, you don't, if you're not familiar with the term. When you train your brain to react a certain way, when you train yourself to do something, you do it. Like It's like a dog, okay? You give a dog a treat for doing a thing, it keeps doing a thing. The essence of training. Now, for people, when you're doing that reacting to rage thing, you train yourself as well. Now, if you've trained yourself with this idea that expressing your anger directly in a feel-good, destructive manner, when you train your brain that that is okay, it's okay. You've actually done exactly what you set out to do. And think about the wider context of that. You've just trained your brain to say that when you're angry, destroying shit is cool. Is that really a good thing to do? Think about it. When you're the guy who wants to punch a punching bag every time you get pissed off, how often do you actually see punching bags just set up around the street? No, you don't, because that's not a thing. You don't see punching bags set up everywhere, and you don't see things that you can just throw and break or scream at just to relieve yourself right on the street corner or in a restaurant or maybe even at your friend's house. Those things aren't there because society doesn't deal with anger that way, or at least it shouldn't, and we don't have the setup to encourage it. There's all a reason for this, because... This is the bad way to deal with it. You want to know the good way? Let's say you're pissed off at somebody. You're really fucking angry. You could just punch the world apart. You're that angry. And there's all these meat punching bags running around, talking and yapping, and you just want to hit them all in all of their parts. All of them. Well, that's all wrong. You need to train yourself to take that anger, that energy, that push and drive to do something and... Well, yes, do something with it, but go for a run, right? You could just say, all right, I'm angry. I need to take a breather and just run. Every time you're really angry, find a moment, take a breath, and run until you don't feel angry. Or let's say you're angry and you're at your home and you're stewing in it. Well, rather than just stewing in it or punching your pillow, build something. Go take care of your laundry. Scrub the fuck out of your floors. Something. Because what you're doing here is setting up a risk and reward system here. Okay, you're angry. You could do something bad here. You're angry. So, what do you do? You clean something. You work on something. You fix something. You run as hard as you can. You take that energy and channel it into something else. And I assure you, it will feel good too. It'll feel just as good as punching a pillow or screaming at something. But, when you're done and you release that anger, well, you get to look down at the thing you just did in that fugue of rage and you built something. You did something productive and useful with that energy. Rather than screaming or hitting or yelling or just stewing in it, you've done something constructive and useful with that energy. You feel both satisfied and relieved. And you've trained your brain that this is the response you need to take. To take a note here, responding to your anger is not bad. Taking your anger and doing something with it is not bad. You actually pretty much have to. If you do just sit there on it and bottle it up and give it no release at all, that too is very bad. Some people can do it, that whole Zen sort of monk deal where they're anger and then they say there is no anger and then they release it that way. But most people are not equipped to do that. They don't have that 
tight emotional control required for that. So they have to release it some way. Like when you get passionate and angry and furious at something and you, everyone has passions, right? You do things. Well, they're passions. Passion is energy too. Ta rage is a form of passion. You are an artist, put your rage into your music, your paintings, your drawings, whatever. Put that anger in there and express it with each furious swipe of a pen. Do something with it to create. You can express that anger, not only in a non-harmful manner, but in a truly evocative and meaningful form. If you have a passion for art or literature, science, something, you can write it, you can draw it, you can type it, you can sing it. Where do you think metal comes from? Like, people are singing about their fury at the world, right? Something's wrong with this shit and they think it's stupid, so they are yelling about it. Punk music. What do you think punk is? The entire genre is built roughly around the idea of I'm pissed at this shit in the system and I'm gonna express it with my music. They're angry. They're grungy. They're hitting that guitar because it expresses it in a manner that is a little more constructed than I'm gonna shoot some guy out on the street. Like, for me, when I am angry and frustrated by something, upset, like I had a friend go to jail at one point here, and that, well, it upset my day, right? That messed up my day. So rather than scream or yell or punch things or whatever, I went outside and I farmed. I dug in the ground, I weeded, I tilled, I scraped at the ground. It was a good way to release anger, right? That ground's hard, you gotta hit it, you gotta dig in there. But at the same time, I'm not like hitting people, breaking objects. This is a constructive activity. I'm digging into the dirt to plant things. It just happens to be an activity where I can put some energy into it when I'm mad. But the end result is constructive. I have spent my anger to further my goals instead of spend my anger just to do it uncontrolled and thoughtlessly. But I'm here to tell you, and please listen, do not release it in that standard way of hit stuff, punch things, break stuff, or yell. Because all you are doing is setting yourself up to continue to do that whenever you're angry. And again, there won't always be a convenient, non-harmable object for you to release it on. There might just be people around, and meat punching bags make you go to jail when you hit them. Let's be very clear. When you release it at people or objects ends with friendships or things or even people broken. And once you're done being angry, that thing is still broken. That person is still broken. That friendship is still broken. You feel better now, but now there's another problem. That's the core of this. When you deal with your anger in an unhealthy way, not only do you train yourself to keep dealing with your anger in an unhealthy way, but you give yourself more reasons to be angry because you just broke more shit. Now you're angrier. Well, why did I do that? Because that was stupid. I shouldn't have hit that person. I shouldn't have broke that thing I needed or I wanted or that person was cool. And now I fucked it up because I was angry in a moment. That passes. Anger passes. But you're left with the consequences of the anger. So you had better start choosing that consequence. And it's so simple. Just start picking what you want to happen and do it until it sticks. And then once it sticks, It'll just keep sticking. And this is more than just a day-to-day -day thing where, oh, you're just angry and this is, it happens, right? No, this is, I dare say it, a cycle? Yes, yes it is. This has been a cycle, in fact, the entire time. It's a cycle of construction versus destruction. The destruction here is what you do with your rage when you release it the way I'm talking about that's bad. You get a cycle of destruction where you train your brain, release anger with destruction. So you keep doing it. Feels good. So you just keep doing it, and it's a cycle. It's hard to break out of it when you're that guy who, when you get angry, you get drunk and you beat somebody. That's hard to break out of when you keep doing it because you tell your brain, yes, this is good. It's appropriate. It's Pavlovian training. Yet again, hit that term because it's true. You're training yourself to react a certain way. Well, you're going to keep doing it. So it's a cycle. But you can break out of this cycle, or you can not enter it at all by simply taking the energy of rage and channeling it into something else, something constructive, useful, or at least not harmful. And then in the end of the day, when you feel better, when your rage is spent and done, you're left with something constructive and useful rather than a destructive cycle that you have to clean up now. Just something to think about.